Mycorrhizae are species of fungi that form a symbiotic relationship with about 95% of the plant, plants on this planet. So things like broccoli and red beets, that's not relevant. But when we're talking about tomatoes or garlic or berry bushes or fruit trees, this is a really important ally. So if I was a, a fruit tree, and let's say my canopy is this big, that means that my root system probably, unless it's limited by ledge, extends about two and a half times further than my canopy. And that means that I, as a shopper, the tree, have access to phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, what have you, in a limited radius around myself. And that's not easy, that's not too hard to imagine using up, that I don't have access to all that I need. When myco mycorrhizal fungi are on the scene, through their hyphae, they extend the reach of a fruit tree by as much as a hundred times. So that means that suddenly I can get magnesium from down there where those sunflowers are growing. And I can also get moisture if it's a dry year from over there where the ground is a little bit wetter, delivered by the mycorrhizal fungi in exchange for those plant sugars. That's why this connection is so, so important to the health of a fruit tree. This again, is something that's really easy to screw up. And some of the things that screw it up are the use of herbicides. When we spray fungicides, be it chemical fungicides or an excess of copper or an excess of sulfur, well, it's a fungicide. These are fungi. So not all fungi are bad. And when you screw it up in a big major way, that's when you get into needing more medicines to make up for the fact that the biology isn't right. So again, it's, it's a big part of what we're trying to emphasize because this is such a vital connection. It's really fascinating. Underneath the ground, yes, we know there's roots. Now we know there's these fungi. The same fungi that attaches to an apple tree root may also be attached to a woodsy herb. It may be attached to a umbelliferous flower species share different fungi. They don't all connect with everything. And in the process of being connected, in the process of reaching out, um, the tree is also making decisions. And so the same root system may be colonized by three different species of mycorrhizal fungi. And at one point in the day, one fungus is offering a better deal than another. And the tree actually makes decisions. I'll take that phosphorus. No, I don't need that potassium. Send it over there to the umbelliferous plants. And that underground economy, that's the intelligence of nature at work. You know, we just have an inkling of it. And again, our job is simply not to screw it up. But it gets really fascinating as you get into some of the stuff going on. We can't see a lot of that, but what we can see are mushrooms. So if in your orchard and in your berry plantings, you're seeing the tip of the iceberg, being the mushroom of this vast mycelium underneath in the soil, you're doing a good thing. Another thing that mycorrhizal fungi do, we're going to learn about the, the feeder root flushes of the tree. Twice a year, there's a feeder root flush that takes place. And when that feeder root flush extends the permanent root system of the tree, only slightly, it's when the mycorrhizal fungi also extend the reach of the tree. And just as that feeder root system withdraws at a certain point, the mycorrhizal fungi also come back into their heart. And when those hyphae, which were bringing nutrients, are abandoned, they leave behind a coating, a carbon coating called glomulin. Now, the thing about glomulin that's really amazing is if you have a really sandy soil, one that's nutrient porous, you have trouble irrigating it enough, but even more so, it doesn't hold the nutrients, glomulin helps to start binding the sandy soil together. And conversely, if you have a really heavy clay soil, I guess that's what it is here, right? <laughs> Glomulin helps spread those clay particles apart. So the biology is, is a really important soil structural tool as well. You know, it's not just bringing nutrients, it's over the course of time, when you've been stewarding the same ground for 20, 30 years, and you start to see the positive results of having added mulch and compost for years and years, it's because the biology did the work with the food that you provided for it. <laughs>